Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Mount Olive on this uh, beautiful spring day, uh, third Sunday of, of Easter. And uh, bulletin announcements are printed for your benefit. I'd like to make a spe special note that we are having a voters meeting uh, beginning after the second service, starting probably about 11.45. Um, and I believe that's going to be in the fellowship hall. Um, and you are welcome to attend. If you're not a voter and want to be, you attend one meeting, and at the next, at the second meeting, you are registered as a voter. Um, rest of the announcements, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. One good piece of news is that uh, we are looking to install our new video system. This too is starting on Tuesday. So we'll see what happens with that and how that goes. Uh, hopefully we'll have it ready to go. And our first hymn is uh, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then reflect upon God's word, our sin, and his grace. We confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol, you restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes with the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of your fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man his, this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ should, would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for the restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason the world did not, does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 36th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. This also serves as the basis of our sermon this morning. As they were talking about these things, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought he was a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy, they were mar marveling. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? Then they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending you the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we sing, Love Divine, All Loves Accept.
like to read once again these words. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Touch and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved, while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ, we know that Easter is an amazing and wondrous day. And to these days, we celebrate with great joy probably the, the biggest, sun well, not probably, certainly the biggest Sunday of the whole church year, Easter Sunday. But there is more going on on that Easter, that first Easter Sunday, than just Jesus coming out of the grave. We see, of course, we see the women going and finding an empty tomb. We see a couple of disciples racing and finding an empty tomb. We see an angel in the empty tomb proclaiming he is not here, he is risen just as he said. And that's most of what Easter, most of the Easter story that we hear. But a lot went on the rest of that day. Just before our text, one of my favorite, all-time favorite te passages in Scripture, Jesus is walking down the road to Emmaus with two disciples who were dejected and depressed because they had just witnessed the death of their Master and Lord. And Jesus opens to them the beauty and the wonder of the truth of all of the scripture of the day, what we would call, what we call the Old Testament, and the prophets and the promises that it contained concerning especially the events of those specific days. How the Christ would have to suffer and die, but that he would rise again on the third day. And then that moment, as the disciples are sitting down, they had invited him in, abide with me, fast falls the evening, eventide. There he is with them, he breaks the bread and their eyes are opened and they recognize him for the very first time of that day and they see that he is alive, that he is risen and then boop, out he goes, disappears. And all of a sudden he's back, a two hours journey back in Jerusalem. These disciples race back. They tell the disciples in Jerusalem what's going on and here he is again. Different gospel writers have a variety of different accounts of what happened in that upper room. <coughs> Last week we read about Thomas and how he would not believe the word, the message of the other disciples who had seen him as Jesus comes amazingly into the midst of the disciples in that upper room, even though the doors were locked. No way for him to get in. And yet there he was, in the flesh. And that very same story is coming from Luke now. Here he is, he appears to his disciples in the flesh. And what does he say? Here are the disciples. They've done this before, this very same thought comes to their mind. Remember when Jesus came walking on the water? 
And the disciples thought, it's a ghost. Here he is again, in the upper room. He appears to them. What's the first thing that comes to their mind? It's a, our new translation says, spirit. It's a ghost. Jesus said, no, 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 no. But before anything else, he says, peace be with you. And we hear in other places where Jesus says this, peace be with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give unto you. The peace that comes from above, the peace that knows, that understands and believes that God's plan is finding its fulfillment here and now in Jesus, who is the Christ, peace. Be at peace, be at rest, have confidence that all is well. And then he says, look, it's me. See my hands, see my feet, the nail prints. Oh, and by the way, do you have anything to eat? <laughs> I get a kick out of this. You know, if it were us, we'd probably give him a piece of pizza or something. But they happened to have broiled fish, and they said, here. And he ate. Ghosts don't need to eat. As a matter of fact, you know, all the cartoons, a ghost eats, and boop, it goes right through them. They doesn't work that way for a ghost. But Jesus ate the food that they gave him and demonstrated that it is him. He is, is risen from the dead and now will live and reign to all eternity. The disciples are still soaking it all in. And then more and more and more come in, those, in the events following that very first Easter. Even on that first Easter evening, we read in Matthew, he breathes on them, gives them the Holy Spirit, and charges them with the authority and the responsibility to forgive or not forgive sins according to the need of the person that they're with. The authority to forgive sins. The Jews of Jesus' day thought only God could forgive sins. But now the disciples and through them all of us in the church and especially the church itself has that authority to forgive. And then, in another place, he says, go and make disciples of all nations. Here, he says, you are going to bring repentance and forgiveness to the whole world beginning in Jerusalem. Over and over and over, you see Jesus opening up the mission and the work of the church to these disciples who are now, for the, probably for the very first time, fully understanding what Jesus has come to do and fully believing and trusting in Him. Believing and trusting in Him. And with that belief and with that trust, that moves them and moves us likewise to action, to forgive, to preach, to proclaim, to make disciples. Remember that famous verse, Matthew? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. How do you do that? Baptizing and teaching. The mission of the church is there in these post-Easter moments and days. 
Jesus is giving us his walking orders. This is what shall happen now because I am risen from the dead. It is I, it is me, myself, in the flesh. It's not just a spirit. It's not just a ghost. I am here for all people that believing all may have life and life eternal. It makes a difference. And that very first Easter, we see it all coming together. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the disciples huddled in fear in that upper room? Jesus comes into their midst, still in fear, and then he opens their mind to the scriptures. And all the pieces fall literally into place. And all the mysteries of the Old Testament, of the prophecies and of the promises, all make sense to them. And the wow factor that must have been going on in their hearts and in their minds as they see now for the very first time God's whole plan of salvation and how all of it is fulfilled and completed in the person, in the work, in the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having given, having given his, the walking orders to the disciples, they have extended that, those walking orders now to us. We have the task of carrying out or carrying on the mission that Jesus gave to his first disciples. We now have the scriptures not just on scrolls locked away in some synagogue, but we, we have the scripture in your hand. Some of you have it on your cell phone. Let me ask, how many of you have a Bible on your cell phone? Okay, talk to me. We're going to get this taken care of. Because there's an app. There's an app for that. You can have the Bible, like a gazillion translations, English, Spanish, Italian, German, Japanese, Korean, all those on your cell phone, and any time you want to access it, guess what? You've got your Bible right there in your pocket. Because we carry our cell phones everywhere, right? And any time you need the scripture, it is right there. God's truth, God's promises are all right there for you to have and to use on a daily basis. To have and to use, not just for your own benefit, but as you carry out the mission of the church in this community and in our world as a whole. God is at work in his church even today. For guess what? We are not... I almost made a mistake. We are Good Friday people because we preach Christ crucified. But we have an Easter smile because Christ is risen from the dead and we have something to tell your friends, your neighbors, your family, and the world. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now may the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed.
spread the reign of God the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
these things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Lord dismiss us with your blessing. Go in peace and serve the Lord.